Good morning, Money.net viewers. This is Steve Flanagan here with you Tuesday, May 30th, as we run into the end of the month to discuss currencies. You can hit me up in the Scout chat or on my Twitter handle, sflanagan1979, if you have any questions following up today's uh, podcast. As always, it's my intention to educate the viewers with some of the insights and, and tools that I've learned over my 40 plus years trading FX in the markets. What drives and moves currency markets plays a vital part of each and every one of the markets as we enter North American trading. It's important that you have a, a small window with the dollar index or the euro dollar or sterling, whatever currency, because each of the currencies can indicate what's going to happen ahead. Why? Very simple, money moves first. Let's look at the topics that are driving the currency markets each and every day. Inflation, stabilizing, interest rates. We're in between meetings right now. Next week, we'll start with the RBA, followed by another round of central bank meetings in June. And geopolitics. Well, that's kind of been on the sidelines for a while, but that may be coming back. And I emphasize to you, watch your geopolit. What is the big event out there? Well, the big event is obviously the Ukraine and Russia. And with eight drones being shot down over Moscow over the weekend, that's something that percolates back to the top. What happens if a headline comes out? Well, we already know money moves first. And in March, when we had a systemic risk problem, we saw one, buy yen, sell dollar. Two, buy gold. A third possibility is to buy sterling. Sterling is moving to one of my favorites, Big Beat. Going to love that one. So let's look in the FX news today. We have an agreement in principle to raise the U.S. debt ceiling. That's a positive. It avoids default. Turkey had a presidential runoff election, won by Erdogan. Five more years in power. That kind of puts that little geopolitic, which can perk up now and then, to the sideline. However, there is a crack in the seams beginning to show in the euro. Number one, they're in a recession, two quarters in a row of negative growth. Number two, Spain had regional and local elections over the weekend, and the ruling party, the socialists, lost. Prime Minister Sanchez ordered a snap election for July 23rd, now that they've lost. Now, that could be a destabilizing factor for those who are a little look into history. We know that the European crisis about 10 years ago, Greece and Spain were two of the prominent characters and players in that. And Sweden, the Riksbank president Jansen came out and said, the weakening of the Swedish krona could become a problem. They do not want it to continue to weaken. Okay, what do they have? Interest rates. They could raise interest rates, which are presently at 3.5%, or they could directly intervene in the market. Something to keep an eye on. Later in the week, we have the Eurozone inflation figures coming out on Thursday. That's going to be, along with my Eurozone cracks, watch that carefully. Sterling were very upbeat on its economic figures recently. And given the fact that their inflation came off so sharply, sterling is moving quickly to the forefront of one of those currencies that we want to look to to buy. Um, interest rates are still expected to continue to go up there, presently at 4.5%. They're expecting three more raises of rates, which would bring it up to 5.25%. And this is all very supportive of sterling, provided the economic figures continue to support. And then back into Japan. Well, with Jap with the dollar yen today almost touching 141, well inside of our objective zone, and we have talked about what's going to happen if we get above our objective of 142 and a half, 
we're going to expect to see Bank of Japan. And sure enough, they showed up this morning warning, not warning, but saying we're watching FX moves carefully because the yen has been weakening. Well, at zero, minus 0.1% 0 interest rates, guess what? It's going to weaken. However, very quickly, Bank of Japan Ueda came out and said we will continue to support the economy with easing in our yield control that they are pushing, and they will keep interest rates low. And inflation figures in Japan went to 3.2% in May from 3.5, further supporting the Bank of Japan's policies. So that's kind of in the FX news today. Um, and now we'll quickly jump into some of our currency pairs. As I look at the dollar index, we've itemized the 170, 101.20 support zone right in here, which held very nicely. A little bit of a warning sign, a very sharp move in the dollar that we've seen is beginning to get threatened here. Dollar index is 104.03 right now. We're beginning to see a little ebbing in the stochastics, which could indicate a technical correction of the dollar moving somewhat lower. You will notice that in the euro dollar and the sterling and the dollar index, they're all the same. FX markets are so systematic, so it's quite likely that all the currencies kind of move into the same overbought conditions, along trend lines, look for tops. They all trade pretty much the same. But jumping into the euro dollar is something I still believe we did call for a 107.20 level support zone. If it breaks, we have an objective of 105.20. And I do still think we're going to see that. The low in the euro was 107.49. Uh, 106.49, and I do believe we still are going to see the euro dollar trade lower. Some location points, location points are vital since it's so systematically oriented in FX. Computer models can utilize closes. Why do I emphasize it in FX? Because every day at 5 p.m. in New York, the day, the trading day ends. And a new trading day begins with a new value date. The value date in spot trading is two days. If I trade today on May 30th, the value date of when that transaction completes and shows in my account will be June 1st. So, at 5 p.m., the clocks adjust and trading date value dates, which matter when interest rates are all so different around the world on whether you are long a currency or short a currency to fund it. There is a rollover and there are points a little bit more than I wanted to talk about today. But what my point is. 5 p.m., you have a definitive closing level, and all the computer models lock in that level in which they operate. So we look at the euro dollar, again, in an oversold condition. Technically, it's bouncing. 107.31 is our uh, present level. Last week's close, wow, 107.31. The week before, 108.08, substantially higher. And the quarter one close was 108.45. I'm going to begin to mention quarter one close as we move into June. You're going to start to use a quarter two focal point. But right now, 107.31, this is a great point in time to have a position. You can be long with a 10-point stop loss lower. You could be short against that close with a 10-point stop higher. And what I suggest when I use location points, if I go short and it breaks higher and triggers my stop, then I enter a long. So I take a short and go from short to long in the hopes that this technical correction will continue. Likewise, on the downside, if I were long, I could then quickly reverse out of a long into a short. What my point is, it's a definitive level in which you can act along with very prudent risk management tools. And there is no better place 
than where you're at right now in the euro at 107.31. Watch it very carefully as we oscillate on both sides of this again because all the computer models have this level in their model making and decision making. Jumping into cable, Sterling is turning out, as you can see from today's move here, a very sharp move up. We're at 124.18. We closed last week at 123.49. So we're up three quarters of a point here already in after coming off of the lows seen last week at 123.12. How do I play K uh, Sterling right here? Looks like it's a technical bounce. Clearly, we're getting a stochastic turn from a very oversold position. So you're coming up against some previous tops here at 124.80. Should we get back above there? We could retarget in these highs of 126.60 through 80, where we had a triple top formation. So I like Sterling. Sterling is one of those currencies put aside. When the dollar becomes a question, sterling is one that you want to be long. It's a very tradable. It's usually the second or third most traded currency pair in a seven and a half trillion dollar day. And dollar yen. Oh boy. Dollar yen. We talked about the objective 139.80 to 142.20. We've hit a high of 140.93 today. And Bank of Japan comes in with verbal intervention. This is a controlled currency. Bank of Japan loves to watch the dollar yen because it has so much impact on the trading relationship in Japan being a major exporter in the world. They don't want the yen to get too weak because they import inflation, but they don't want yen to get too strong, which then creates an uncompetitive situation for Japanese exporters. When we traded above 150 back in October of last year, the Bank of Japan came in and actually intervened. So coming off of that low, we've had a very nice move during this whole period of time. Japan has left interest rates at minus 0.1%. It is a low interest rate currency. It is a currency you want to be short because you earn the points by being long the other currency. For the dollar, you would earn five and a quarter percent. The mix, Mexican peso, you'd earn 11 and a quarter percent. Wow, is this a, what we call a carry trade currency. Yen, you want to be short. However, as you begin to get above 142 and a half, you're going to enter into the Bank of Japan. Any point in time, they can come in with a comment and they can knock this down. Last night, they knocked it down over a hundred points in just simply saying, we're watching. They didn't do anything, but it knocked it over 100 points down. So that's something. It is in an oversold, con overbought condition. I do think Dali Yen could probably come back down into a 138, 137 and a half, 138 level before basing and making another move up. But just to bring that Mexican peso in, I love to bring because it, it can be the third or fourth most active traded currency in a day. As you can see, we talked about 1780 to 1720 uh, to 1820, 1800 to 1820 as a sell zone because it's 11 and a quarter percent high yielding interest rate. The objective was 1745. We went down to a low of 1741. Dolomex is in uncharted territory. So how low can we go? Question mark. At 11 and a quarter percent, if the dollar goes into a stable period or we begin to see the dollar begin to come off on a technical correction, Mex is one you want to own. So I think that's, that's good enough uh, for the day. What I want to point out now is... What is your trading style? Short-term, long-term, in and out trader? Have a location trade in mind. Know where you are. Because if you know where you have been in the past, you have a better understanding to know where we are going and you can manage your risk accordingly. Keep your stops tight. Let your take profits run. So that's location trading. Why has the dollar been surging? Every topic you hear is AI, AI, AI. Think about how everybody has moved out of the U.S. on all the default fears. 
And now suddenly we have an agreement and everything in AI, look at NVIDIA and how that moved. All this money is coming back to the US, watch the NASDAQ. The dollar inflows is new money into the markets. That's why I see currency markets are important for you to have on your screen. Two weeks ago, we talked about the euro dollar breaking the 109.50 through 70. We had two to three weeks of lows in those zones, and it went through a knife through butter. And we highlighted it must be massive flows going out of the euro. We showed you the DAX and the euro and how they correlated. And we also indicated in a seven and a half trillion dollar market for that euro dollar to slice through all those chart points, the, the flows had to be in the massive multiple, multiple billions. And where are we today? We went all the way down to a low in 106s. And now we're sitting in this zone here. And that's why currencies are important. Because if you look at after that euro dollar move, what happened in the tech sector, the NASDAQ, and all the talk on AI, it all correlates perfectly. So I think that's kind of enough. Watch the dollar, keep it on your screen. Remember, we're beginning to see a lowering of inflation expectations. The whole point of raising rates rapidly was to break the inflation expectations. Currencies are volatile. They can come alive at any moment. And this is why I believe with the disjointed central banks in the world, volatility plays out in FX. That's a wrap. Let's keep the currency markets hot. I'll see you on Thursday at the same time. Flanagan out.